Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are covering part two of the build on my Mead 16 inch RX 400. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I can count. And having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. Hey guys, and as a quick recap for part one, just in case you haven't watched it, and I'm putting the link in the top of the video there. We talked about how to remove the back cover, uh, and then I talked about how I was going to design these mounting blocks for this dovetail, which are designed, and the rear one's mounted. Uh, the, the plate itself is not mounted yet because I have not mounted the uh, front block. And this actually gives me a uh, good opportunity to show you guys, you know, how the block kind of turn out. So uh, cut, you know, fully out of aluminum. I could have theoretically uh, cut these on, a, on my laser cutter uh, friends uh, cutter, but uh, I did them kind of manually. They turn out pretty darn well. Um, and I think, you know, they'll serve the purpose well. Besides the mounting blocks, as you probably saw in the intro of the video, the mount for the scope has come in, the Les Mondi Titan. I've actually wanted one of these guys for a while. Um, you know, they're actually kind of hard to come by because they don't really make them anymore. Um, I actually ended up ordering this guy uh, from a gent in England. So thank you, Steve, for, you know, hooking me up with this thing. Um, yeah, mount looks like it's in great condition and I think it will be a really good match for the big mead. Alrighty guys, so don't get scared here. You see what's going on on the dust cap there? I don't know what happened to the scope, but as it was stored, you know, by the previous owner in the garage, this white crud got, you know, on, uh, thankful not the carbon fiber portion, but, um, like the, uh, the you know, two rings, the front one and the rear one had it as well. So I actually had to paint them. So I already painted them. That's what the spray paint there is all about. But anyhow, um, I am, of course, going to resurface this uh, do, or, uh, dust cap as well. Uh, but for now, let's get rid of that. As you can see, uh, the optics on the scope uh, definitely need a good cleaning. Um, and then, I don't know if it's showing up on video, like those, uh, you see that kind of like webbing, you know, kind of like right there and stuff. That's not scratches or anything uh, on the optics, thankfully. That's just spider web, very fine spider web inside the tube. So anyway, it just needs a good cleaning. Um, I don't see anything there that won't clean out. Uh, so kind of like uh, my plan for, you know, part two of the video is to basically... Uh, take off this whole, you know, kind of front hardware section so that way um, I could get the second uh, bracket mounted. I could, you know, technically screw it in, but I just want to make sure that I'm not hitting any electronics because, uh, you know, there's focus motor uh, shafts there or the corrector play, which now, you know, like I, I could say it's not going to hit the corrector. But anyway, first I want to get all this stuff removed and then obviously I got to pull the corrector to get it all cleaned out inside there. So let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so the first order of business is to remove, so similarly to the back plate, there's a, kind of like a plastic kind of cover around this, you know, whole front section. So we're gonna remove that. It's held by uh, four, I believe, uh, screws that are kind of all around us. So let's go and pull those guys. Alrighty guys, so and I apologize, there was only three screws holding this. So this thing was uh, a little tight on there, but it came right off. So again, you know, here's the play, it's just, you know, plastic. So we're gonna go and set that aside and move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step in this, uh, you know, like uh, kind of uh, process, I guess, is to remove this kind of outer uh, ring that goes around the corrector uh, and then in order to do that uh, there's basically uh, two screws that hold it at each one of these three stakes so there should be a total of six screws to remove so let's go ahead and do that
Okay, and so at this point, I'm getting to the last screw here, and I'm kind of holding the wrench so it doesn't go falling anywhere. And then this thing should just pull right off, just like that. So that's the rain, and I'm just setting it right aside. Alrighty, guys, so before we proceed, I just kind of wanted to show you guys, you know, where we're at, where we're at here. Uh, so basically, the corrector is essentially ready to come out. Um, it's held uh, by screws kind of, you know, going all around. So there's a pair there, there's a pair there, and then there's a pair here. It's the screws that are kind of recessed. I believe these ones here hold the actual ring that holds the glass, but we wouldn't want to remove that how we typically do on a normal SCT. Because, you know, with the normal SCT, you can kind of grab the secondary mirror, right, and kind of pull out on it. Well, here with the RCX, you can't really do that because there's nothing to grab onto. The secondary is actually bonded to the corrector plate. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting design. So what we're gonna do is unscrew them all and pull it out as a unit. Now, before you do that, um, as I said in the first part of the video, the RCXs are kind of unique because they have a built-in dew heater uh, for the corrector plate, which is really nice. So you need to undo this electrical connector right here. Alrighty guys, and before proceeding, I did kind of uh, tilt the scope a little bit, you know, higher up so that the corrector doesn't go falling out on me. Although I don't think it'd really go anywhere. So anyhow, let's, you know, having said that, let's undo this connector before I forget because, you know, I don't want to damage anything that doesn't have to. Okay, so now the corrector is loose electronically wise, and I'm going to go ahead and start undoing those screws and pull the corrector plate out. Alrighty guys, so as you guys can see, the corrector is pretty loose here. I believe there are pins that kind of hold it in place to where it shouldn't fall on me or anything, but just in case, I'm going to have a hand underneath it, and I'm going to be ready to lift this thing out of the way as soon as this last screw is loose. Okay, so let me put the wrench down so I don't have anything metal to scratch anything. Okay. And then, yeah, so um, it is being held right now. You know, as long as you have it tilted, you know, the scope tilted, I probably only have it tilted like 20 degrees, but as long as you have it tilted, you know, somewhat, um, yeah, it's good to go. Like if I honestly had this on the mount to where I could actually have it pointed up, that's preferably what I'd, you know, recommend doing. But this is, you know, this is an okay setup. So hopefully when I lift this thing out, the OTA isn't going to go rolling away on me. If it is, I guess that's going to make for, you know, good YouTube, you know, content, right? <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't happen, though. Alrighty, guys. There she is on all its glory. Came right out. Alrighty guys, everything went smoothly. The corrector plays out at this point. I'm gonna get to cleaning the corrector. Um, if you're not familiar with that procedure, I have made a video on that. Uh, so I'm not gonna, you know, repeat the whole procedure. Check it out, I'm linking it up above. So besides cleaning, you know, the corrector plan, cleaning out everything here, uh, the other thing that I do need to do is, uh, of course, still remove, you know, like these side gizmos here. And in order to do that, I'm gonna have to remove, uh, these things actually kind of have this, um, some sort of like plastic in there that kind of covers the interior. It's supposed to also, you know, be kind of like a um, anti-reflection layer. As you can see, it's super reflective. So I don't know, I might think about putting something else in there. Um, but anyhow, in the next video, I am for sure going to remove this thing. I'm going to remove these side gizmos. Um, and then possibly I might also pull the uh, primary mirror out, depending on how difficult it is. Uh, for cleaning as well. So anyhow, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.